Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about all that end of season nonsense. It's not the best content in the world. It's not the most exciting content in the world, but it's something to react to anyway. It's something that involves Celtic and its players, and we get to see if we're being fairly sort of praised for our season that we've had under Ange Postecoglou. Last week, we looked at the Celtic in-house awards. We looked at the player of the year, young player of the year, etc, etc. I gave out my votes as to who I think should win those, but today, we're going to be looking at in the wider context. We're going to be looking at the rest of Scotland, um, teams who are, you know, of course, having very good seasons, some who are having okay seasons, uh, and some that are making up excuses for this season. But we're going to rate the, the stuff that's been given to us so far, the player of the year, the team of the year, all that nonsense. And yeah, let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. As always, before we go any further off the video, go down below if you can and press that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey if you haven't already. We're almost at 34,000 subscribers, so let's try and get there, hopefully, uh, in time for the Derby this week. Maybe a bit ambitious, but I trust you guys to do it. So go down if you enjoy the content and hit the like button as well while you're down there. So the Professional Footballers Association of Scotland, the PFA, announced today their Team of the Year, which has... Uh, you know, satisfied many, um, but also left room for the normal conversations, the normal discussions, people are being unfairly left out, people being given special treatment, you know, it never pleases everyone, simply put, it's always a, a an award that I feel like is just a bit pointless, um, not, not for the players, you know, it's nice to be rewarded for your fine form if you've been great over the course of a season, but in terms of debating it, um, and in terms of getting offended by it, however, I just feel it's pointless, because in, in reality, it doesn't really mean much at the end of the day, as long as Celtic Celtic are winning and Celtic are taking home the trophies. I don't really care who's in the team of the years or who's named player of the year. Um, I think that's that's probably more just a, an achievement for the, the guys themselves who, who are playing on the park. Um, so for us, it's not that much of a big deal, but it's always good to have a little conversation around it anyway uh, to see how we are being... Um, rewarded for our fine season or the players are being rewarded for the fine season um, and there is always room for all that conversation so the team did come out this morning it's also been announced for the other leagues in Scotland the championship league one league two they've also had a look at some of the player of the year nominations in other leagues I think that's yet to come for the premiership as I currently record this video so there's a lot to still come in. You know what it's like? There's so many awards and so many different organisations who like to get involved in this sort of thing. You know, you have the, the PFA, then you have the Writers Association, then you have the SPFL. And there's so many that, once again, I just feel like it makes it all a little bit pointless. So I don't think it's something to get your knickers in a twist about. Um, but let's see what it's saying anyway. And let's have a look, first of all, at what the PFA have named as their uh, their team of the season. Sorry. So here is the team that the PFA have awarded as team of the season. It runs as... Craig Gordon standing between the sticks, a back four of James Tavernier, Cameron Carter Vickers, John Suter and Josip Juranovic, a midfield that consists of Tom Rogic, Callum McGregor and Regan Charles Cook, I think that's meant to be a midfield anyway, and then the front three seems to be Jota, Morelos and Kyogo Furahashi, that there is the team of the season with the lovely graphic of them all lined up, um, two Rangers players in there, a couple of Hearts players and John Suter and Craig Gordon, we've obviously got Ross County's uh, Regan Charles Cook as well, but the big talking point is six Celtic players make the grade. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not even five. Six Celtic players make it. Not bad for a team who's, uh, number one, apparently the worst champions of, of all time if we become champions, but not bad for a team who was meant to do nothing this year. A team full of duds, that some would say. Uh, six players. It's a good turnout. So the team in general, I think, is is probably one that I think universally, as Scottish football fans, is hard to argue. I think it's pretty fair. Um, it's one of those ones. I always look at this team of the season debate with such thick green tinted glasses. And in last season's case, I think it was fair enough to look at it with such thick blue tinted glasses. For me, team of the year suggests the best of the best. It suggests the best players in the league. No matter who they play for or what, you know, it, it should be the best and always be prioritised the best. So, in years gone by, I remember, for example, the, the Brendan Rodgers era of Celtic. Every year, there would be a couple of Celtic players who would be left out of the team um, for players lesser in the league uh, or lesser teams in the league. And I'd always think, well, 
have they had better seasons than such and such from Celtic who have been left out? Probably not, but they do need to keep it fair. I understand that. I understand they want to try and keep a bit of variety in it um, and try and bring in a little bit of fairness when deciding this. Um, so, to be fair, I think, in terms of looking at it as a neutral, they've probably got it close to bang on. Um, but as a Celtic fan, I look at that team and I go, right, come on now, come on. There's a couple of Celtic players in there that should that, that have been left out. Um, but in general, six Celtic players, it's hard to argue that. Um, and, and, and all six of those players, absolutely deserving of their sp their space. Kyogo Furuhashi, he's came into the league, he's, he's took it by storm. And I know he's been injured for the past few months, but his form in the opening half of the season alone solidified his place in that team. No doubt about that. I don't care what anybody tries to argue. I see a lot of people who aren't Celtic fans and the replies talk about, like, oh, Kyogo Furuhashi hasn't kicked a ball since Boxing Day. Well, does it matter? Because uh, before Boxing Day, no one was touching him. And beyond the Boxing Day, no one is touching him. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty simple. Uh, Jota, you know, he's just been fantastic. Very much deserving of his place in that team as well. Callum McGregor, he's been probably the most consistent player uh, out of all those 11. He's been fantastic week in, week out. Rarely put a foot wrong. Um, he's been the best captain in the league. Juranovic, been fantastic since coming through the door. A real sort of... Uh, revelation of a player I would say for Celtic he's, he's, he's helped kind of bring that back forward to its absolute best Cameron Carter Vickers uh, as well just been superb once again like McGregor consistently good every week and then finally um, Tom Rogic the player who I just kind of jumped over a minute there probably the one who I think has the most conversation uh, in terms of should he be there shouldn't he be there but he's had a fantastic season he is deserving of this and out of all of Celtic's midfielders um, in terms of Hitati O'Reilly Turnbull, he's the one that's played the most, he's the one who's had the most time in the team, he's been here the longest, considering two of them joined in January, so he's very much deserving and we have got the best midfield in the league, if it was up to me, you'd be having a conversation for three Celtic midfielders in that team, but obviously that isn't possible uh, in this situation, so... I think all six that have made it absolutely deserving, congratulations to them, and it's a real sort of recognition of how good those players have been for us this season, they are very much deserving, um, considering a lot of them were wrote off, I think a lot of people, including Celtic fans, thought Rogic was finished, um, you know, you look at Kyogo coming into the league, people who don't support Celtic were very much, you know, they were suggesting that he was going to be a bum, you know, it's great to see how it's all panned out, and having six in there is just a really sweet sort of End of season toast, you know what I mean? As a Celtic channel, I'm going to keep it mainly Celtic focused. Surprise, surprise. So if you are watching as a Rangers fan or a Ross County fan or a Hearts fan and you're waiting for me to talk about Morelos or Charles Cook or anybody else, you're probably not going to get much of that conversation here. What I'm going to talk about next is players who I feel like are maybe a bit hard done by in terms of being left out of this team. I think there was potential for 8, 9, 10 Celtic players to be included in this year's team of the season considering how good we've been and that's not bias that's not me talking nonsense I'm being serious we've been that good that there is conversation I'm not saying it should be the case but I'm sure that the the, the PFA when sitting down to decide this would have had a, a genuine headache as to how many Celtic players they could have had beyond the six um the first one for me is Joe Hart and I, I, you know me, Joe Hart is my favourite player, I'm obviously going to sh suggest his name first, but I think, I'm, I feel bad for him, I feel like he's someone that really does deserve a spot in here, he gets so overlooked from non-Celtic fans, probably because of how the last few years of his career have went, and don't get me wrong, I was critical of, of his last few years uh, as a professional footballer, That's I'm not going to hide away from that, that's fact, you can go back and look at that on this channel, however, you can then put that away when you start to see someone perform so well. Craig Gordon, magnificent goalkeeper. Um, Shot-stopping ability is incredible, one of the best I've ever seen. But I do believe that there's a genuine conversation for Joe Hart having a better season than Gordon. I think Gordon gets the more spectacular saves, probably because he gets more to do. But Joe Hart has been absolutely sensational, um, and he's been as important to this Celtic team this season as the outfield players. Without Joe Hart in goals, you know, we probably would have conceded a lot more. He's made some big, big saves in big moments. Um, his, his sort of influence on this team in this, this this season cannot be ignored. And for me, I probably would have had him ahead of Craig Gordon. No surprise I'm saying that. Gordon has had a magnificent season and it deserves to be acknowledged. Yes, I'm not going to say hasn't. But he's also had some amount of howlers uh, as well. Not some amount, that's maybe how. He's had a couple. One coming to mind was he should have saved Hattati's shot at fucking Tynecastle. But I don't know. Craig Gordon has conceded 33 goals in the Premiership this season. Joe Hart has only considered, conceded 16 in less games as well. Joe Hart has also kept more clean sheets in that time. 
for me, that suggests he's the best goalkeeper in the league. And that's how I look at the team of the year. It should be the best of the best. I understand that Craig Gordon is playing for a lesser team and he's having to make more saves and he's going to concede more goals because he has a weaker defence than Celtic ahead of him. But Joe Hart has statistically had a better season. And for me, I feel like he should be in the sticks. I'm not overly hot about it and I can understand Gordon being there. He is fantastic, as I said. But I feel like Joe Hart is one of the ones that are hard done by. I know that's going to ruffle the favours of the non-Celtic viewers. I really know it's going to annoy folk. The green tinted glasses are out. Listen, I'm just saying it's a conversation. I would have had Joe Hart. I'm not going to cry that Craig Gordon is there. Um, But yeah, lighten up. It's a fucking team of the year. The other player who I think is uh, has been incredibly hard done by is Liel Abada. I think he really deserves a shout of being in here and probably a shout of joining the front three in that team. He has been magnet for the age that he is as well. What he's done this season is absolutely incredible. 15 goals, 11 assists in all competitions this season. Of course, we don't count the, the European games, but still a magnificent return. I think in the Premiership alone, 10 goals, 7 assists. That is scarily good for someone at his age. And his influence, once again, is something that can't be ignored. I think he's been hard done by someone who I think is um, arguably one of the best attackers in the league. Uh, I know he hasn't featured as much recently in the Celtic team because Jota, Maida, Giacomakis, and now Kyogo coming back have performed so well. But Liela Bada, there's a genuine conversation for him being the guy who spearheaded a lot of what we've done in that opening half of the season, especially the very early days, like just as the season was starting. Abada was one of the real shining lights. Um, so I think he's been hard done by as well. But it's hard to get in Regan Charles Cook, of course, top scorer in the league at the moment. He deserves to be in there. He's, as I said, when it comes down to statistics and quality and what you've done, you can't ignore the top scorer, really. Morelos has had a solid enough season for, for Rangers as well. It is a hard one to get in. And Abad is someone who'll be in there in future years, I'm sure of that. So, you know, a lot of people talk about the likes of uh, Jacques Marcus, Tony Ralston, players who've had great seasons as well. Um, and even some of the newer boys who came in in January. Yeah, they've all had great seasons. I didn't quite expect them to make the grade for the, the final team of the year from the PFA. But yes, there is conversation as always. But I think that the, realistically, we've, we've got what I think we, we, we really would have expected, to be honest. So ultimately, would my have would my team have changed much? Uh, what would have been my team of the season? Well, to be quite honest, I think it's pretty much bang on. I personally think that Starfelt um, and Joe Hart are better and have have had better seasons than Suter and and Craig Gordon. But I will take into consideration and I will acknowledge the fact that they play for Hearts and have had a very successful season considering, you know, the, the kind of ceiling that Hearts can hit. So it's understandable how they've been how they've been left out. Overall, I think the only one change that I think I would have made to the entire team would have been Hart and for Gordon. I think that's the only change I would have made for the team of this season. Um one that is really annoying me are people saying Kingsley should be in over Juranovic. Absolutely not. Stephen Kingsley. Listen, he's had a great season. He has. I'm not going to take that away from him. He's been brilliant. But if you're telling me that Stephen Kingsley is a better player and or has had a better season than Josip Juranovic, you're after nut. <laughs> Just quite simply put, you're off your head. Not biased. Just facts. Absolute facts. Buddy, Juranovic is getting linked with moves to the Premier League. Stephen Kingsley. Come on, wake up, man. There's the Hearts fans region. Adam Kennedy. Pfft. Yeah, so that would have been it. Also, the only other award in relation to the Premiership that I think has been spoke about thus far is the Scottish Press announcing their Writers Association Young Player of the Year nominees. Stephen Welsh has made the cut for that. I don't know how. <laughs> because he's made it and Abada hasn't. What? <laughs> Makes no sense to me once again. I don't know. Do they have to all be Scottish? Does, is that maybe why Abada's not there? The nominees are Nathan Patterson, Josh Doig, Calvin Ramsey, Ross Graham and Stephen Welsh. I'm assuming it's only Scottish players that are up for that award and maybe that's why Liela Bad isn't there. That would make a lot more sense. Um, however, I'm still I'm quite shocked that Stephen Welsh has made the nomination. Nathan Patterson as well, who was only here half the season, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, well, congrats to Stephen Welsh. I wouldn't expect him to win that award, but let's hope he brings something home for Celtic, I suppose. And that's about it. Um... So far, there'll be more, and, and as I said at the start of the video, there's so many of these awards, so many organisations that get their awards out, and, you know, we'll, we'll have more as the season comes to an end, you know, we've still got a few weeks to go as well, so you never know who can put in a shift to, to kind of show that they deserve a shout in here, there could be players who perform magnificently over the next few weeks, and, and really spin the conversation up a little bit, so we'll wait and see, and we'll talk about all the awards and such 
when it comes to the end of the season, I'll also probably do my own sort of Ryan 118 Premiership end of season awards, which you can imagine will be very green and white, um, as it should be. Um, so we'll come on to that at the end of the season. But that for today is the news. That will wrap us up as we edge closer to another derby and hopefully a league title win. Touch wood. But until then, like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.